Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Yes, We Are Here. My name is Jack Curry, and today I'm joined by Mike Gallego, a slick fielding, versatile major league infielder. He spent three seasons with the Yankees. And Mike, as we get started, I want to welcome you in. But first and foremost, I also want to ask you how you and your family are doing during this trying time. Uh, well, I appreciate it, Jack. Thanks for having me. Um, my family actually is doing very well. My son is, uh, one son is in New York, actually. He's at, uh, he's a resident at Yale University right now, going through some residency there. And then my other son's a coach at UCLA. So he's in LA and my daughter uh, lives in LA as well. She's a, a professional hairstylist. So um, all of them are doing well. They are, you know, getting, uh, I, I don't want to say used to wearing a mask, but, uh, you know, there's, I guess there's one by their door as they walk out, making sure that it's part of their life now, the new norm. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's obviously something that we're all trying to uh, uh, deal with at the best that we can. But, uh, you know, at the same time, we, we hope that uh, we all uh, battle through this together and, and um, do what we have to do to, to make things right again. So I do have to ask you one question about the son who is in New York. Has he shared any videos with you or told you about what has become a tradition here at 7 p.m. where it's just a, an onslaught of applause and, and clapping to thank all of the folks on the front lines? Yes, he has, he has sent uh, a couple videos of that from his apartment complex, actually. And, and uh, you know, people outside you know standing outside or uh, waving outside the windows and, and and yelling and screaming and and uh you know celebrating everyone that's uh helped uh during this pandemic it's it's pretty impressive to see you know the citizens of new york once again stepping up and and uh doing what's right and being very supportive of all the people that are are uh, risking their lives every single day for all of us mike i mentioned your three seasons in new york you had a 13-year major league career. If I asked you to reflect on your own career, what are you most proud of? Well, there's, you know, there's actually quite a few things um, to think back about that. Um, I mean, the, fir the, the first thing that jumps out at me is, is obviously uh, allowing, uh, you know, my, my wife, my kids, and my family to uh, – experience all these memories and and uh uh great times uh that we had you know with the playoff teams and and uh just to just to you know say that i've been in the game for this long is is uh very uh uh impressive to myself you know i never it obviously was a boyhood dream um but for me to still be in the game and and uh, earn the respect that i did i believe i did uh from my teammates um, and from the opponents, you know, it, it, it was, it was something that, um, you know, that, you know, being, you know, it, being a representative for players and kids of my stature, for one thing, uh, was something that I was always proud of, you know, I mean, when I, when I, you know, sign an autograph for somebody, and, and, you know, the kid would sign, I'd sign something for a kid, and he'd go back to his mom and dad and said, wow, I'm, I'm taller than him, you know, that was, that was something that, you know, that I was proud of. You know, because obviously it, I think I've, I uh, let people know, let kids know that if you worked hard enough and you're determined, if you wanted something bad enough and you're willing to put the work in, it's possible. And uh, I think I proved that for a lot of the uh, young kids coming up. You're the bench coach for the Angels now. And obviously, if I go to baseball reference, there is a height that is listed. So, Mike, since you brought it up. What was your height for all those years? What was it? Uh, was it legit, or what is Mike Gallego checking in at? Well, it depends. If you measure me with my cleats on or with my cleats off, you know, uh, obviously that gave me an extra inch or so, quarter of an inch. But uh, my 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 height right now is five six and three quarters. And I think back in my card, some of my cards might have said five nine. I don't know how that got on that. There was somebody re reversed that six, but um, you know, it was. Uh, uh, you know, I, I always felt that I was six feet tall when I played on the field. You know, when I was between the lines, I, the, the, my height never uh, bothered me. Uh, actually, it enhanced my, my strike zone for sure. So it was a smaller strike zone. I was lower to the ground on ground balls, and that was what I was known for, was catching the ground balls. Um, but, uh, you know, it, 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 to me, it always mattered. What mattered was the size of, of your heart, uh, your, your, your brain, 
and and uh, your attitude that you brought to the ballpark every day and and uh, I think I I carried uh, a pretty good size of all those three. Mike, I know your focus now is on trying to make sure that the Angels become winners, but you were in the heart and in the middle of those powerhouse A's teams. Three straight World Series, 88, 89, 90. What do you remember about being on those teams? And the second part of the question is this. Do you take incredible joy out of the one win, or is there some times where you feel pain out of not getting those other two? Because David Cohen's got five World Series rings, and he still talks to me about 1988 with the Mets, where he thought they should have gotten to a World Series and won it. So joy out of the one win, or, or do you still think about the ones that got away? Oh, well, there's, there's no doubt. You know, uh, we felt that if there was ever an opportunity for, for a team to be a dynasty, uh, those were the teams. And since we only won one, you know, we, we look at ourselves as uh, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't succeed. Let's put it that way. And yes, you know, the Dodgers in 88, the Kurt Gibson home run, I, you know, we still see that every once in a while. And, and that, that definitely hurts. And then, uh, uh, you know, Rio and, and Sabo with the Reds in 90. I mean, that team just all of a sudden got hot. And, uh, you know, they, they pretty much handed to us. Uh, so, but in 89, um, you know, it was the earthquake series. You know, so you really still don't even think about the A's as the team itself. You talk about it as what happened during the earthquake. And uh, so, uh, you know, although we're, we're very proud to, to obviously have a World Series championship under our belt, um, and during that World Series, the earthquake was, I mean, it, it, you know, there's thousands of stories of, of the devastation. But to me, I always felt that that day we actually – you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of lives that were lost, but I felt that that day we actually, the game actually saved a lot of lives due to the fact that there was more people at home or in a restaurant or a bar watching the game between the A's and the Giants, as opposed to being on that Nimitz freeway at that time. Normally that Nimitz freeway, the Bay Bridge is bumper to bumper. And because of the games that were going on in the area, I felt that there were a lot of people off the street. So, and you know, no disrespect to the lives that were lost, yeah. but there were a lot of lives that were saved at the same time due to the fact that this game was, you know, in the Bay area, the Bay, Bay bridge series. So um, there was a lot of memories, obviously uh, from that. Um, uh, there was uh, some proudness that, uh, you know, we continued through, we waited, uh, but, and we battled through it. We, there were some guys, a lot of us helped red cross uh, during, during the devastation and, and, uh, until Tony took us to our uh, spring training site here in Arizona. But um, it's something that, you know, when you, when you ask people, where were you in the, at the earthquake series, people remember that series. So it was, it was definitely proud. To, I was, I, we're definitely proud to be a part of that, no doubt. Yeah, 30 years later, some very insightful and, and thoughtful memories from you to talk about those, those lives that were saved. You're such a fixture on those Oakland teams, but you elect to sign a three-year free agent deal with the Yankees. They offered about a million dollars more than the A's did. I remember on your conference call, you said, look at those numbers. Wouldn't you guys, wouldn't you guys take that deal? What else attracted you to the Yankees? Gene Michael and Buck Showalter were running the show at that point. You thought you could come to New York and help build a winner, I imagine. Well, you know, the, the, the funny story is, is uh, you know, in order, it takes a special breed to play in New York, um, as far as the players concerned, because that you know there's so much expectations from the organization and from the fans, and uh, you know that that can be intimidating to some players. But it also you know you you get an opportunity to play in New York, um, you know this could make you or break you as a player. And um, to be honest with you, when my agent was going back and forth, I was so in in intense and, and determined to stay with the Oakland A's because I came up through the organization. I'm, I'm a California boy. It's close to home. My agent kept saying, New York's interested. New York's interested. Well, at the time, they had like three or other second basemen, Sachs and, and Velarde and, and uh, Pat Kelly. There's a lot of second basemen available. So I was not thinking the Yankees. I was thinking the Mets. So when my agent told me, hey, you know, the, the Yankees are, you know, they really need a decision here. And I go, wait a minute, the Yankees? The Yankees want me to play for them? Are you serious? 
and they want me to play shortstop as well. I just, I just felt that I earned all the, the respect that I could ever expect to get when the Yankees were calling. So for me, it was something that I was very, very proud to be able to say, you know what? I wore the pinstripes. Mm. I worked for Mr. Steinbrenner. I was a player for the New York Yankees. And that's something that, um, you know, you can never take away. So all those World Series championships with Oakland, those were fantastic. Don't get me wrong. And I was very proud to be a part of, of that, uh, that rock group. We were, we were rock stars over there. <laughs> but, you know, when people ask me, hey, what team did you play for? And I say the A's, the Yankees, and the Cardinals. And they're like, you played for the Yankees? No one even, no one even talks about the other teams. But, you know, it's something that, you know, once you're a Yankee, you're always a Yankee. And, I mean, look, at, you're, you're, you're asking for an interview. I haven't asked for it. No one's asked me for an interview in like 10 years now. And here you are giving me a call and asking for an interview because I was part of that team. So, yeah, you know, it, it, it was something that um, I will always be proud to say that, I was a Yankee, and, and I played with Don Mattingly and, and Wade Boggs and, and uh, wore number two before Derek Jeter, you know. So that's something that I'm very proud of as well. So it was, it was something. It was, um, you know, it, it was – when I became a Yankee, it was like, wow, this is what the big leagues is all about. No disrespect to the A's or the Cardinals, but it was just a little different saying you're, you're a Yankee, no doubt. Yeah. You just stole one of my questions, Mike, because I was going to ask you, do you enjoy being the answer to a trivia question? You wore nine in your first go around with Oakland. How did you end up with number two when you got to the Yankees? Was that just Nick Priori handing that to you, or did you request number two? Do you remember? Well, obviously, if you do remember Nick Priori, number two was the smallest uniform in, in, the, uh, in the closet. So he just threw that at me and said, here, this one will fit you. Um, you know, I believe I had, it. I believe I, it. <laughs> I, I, I guarantee it was, you know, once I, once I got the number and understood what the number meant, you know, the single digit, you know, it, it was, it was, wow. I mean, it was, I, I, you know, I was not worthy of that number. Let's put it that way. It, that's, believe me, that's Derek Jeter's number, you know, and, and I, I said that, you know, a couple of years ago when uh, Derek Jeter became Derek Jeter. Um, but it was uh, obviously, Pretty cool, you know, something you can tell the grandkids, hey, who wore number two before Derek Jeter, you know, and, and uh, to be a part of the trivia question like that, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a part of too many trivia questions, you know, if you look at the back of my, my, my baseball card, but um, I was very fortunate during my career uh, to be able to say that I played with or played against all these superstars, all these Hall of Famers, um, played for these Hall of Fame managers, um, it, it, it's just, it's just something that I am, uh, you know, very proud to be able to say that, uh, I'm, I'm to this day, I've been in this industry for 39 years. I would have never, never thought it, you know, and I remember just being in the backyard, you know, emulating uh, Pete Rose's stance, you know, and, and, you know, he was my idol when I grew up, I, I was always diving and, and, and sliding and head first and I was always dirty. And, um, you know, that's just the way I played the game. You know, I was, I made sure. Uh, my uniform was dirty by the end of the game. And if, I, if it was dirty, I knew I, I was out there and I, and I competed. Mike, you mentioned before that the A's were rock stars. The Yankees are on their way to being rock stars in 1994. Best record in the American League. And then obviously the strike, the work stoppage. That season never has the opportunity to be finished. I see you're shaking your head already. I've had this conversation with so many people from Paul O'Neill to Buck Showalter. How bothersome is it that that team never got a chance to sort of have an identity in 1994? And who knows, maybe, maybe won a title that year. Yeah, that, that's definitely something that, uh, you know, uh, when you talk, talk about it, you know, to these players today, they're like, wait a minute, you guys didn't, you didn't finish the season. You didn't have the, the playoffs in the World Series. I said, no, we didn't. Uh, we had one of the best records in the game. Um, we had a team that was starting to gel. Uh, we had from top to bottom, you know, we had players that uh, respected each other. Uh, and we, we all had the same goal every single day was to go out and do something positive to help in a baseball game. And it didn't matter. You know, we had our big name players, obviously, Don Medley, Paul O'Neill, 
Bernie Williams was coming, Wade Boggs, Mike Stanley. But we were all so focused of wanting to just bring a winning team back to the city of New York. And to get the, I remember just to get in the backing of the fans, getting the backing of, of the reporters, uh, you know, the, feeling the excitement every time we walked into the clubhouse uh, that we were going to go out there and, and, and compete and, and probably win another game. You know, uh, it, it's, it's definitely uh, very, very disappointing to uh, sit back here and say now today, wow, we, we never had the opportunity. Who knows what could have happened that year, but uh, the opportunity that slipped through your fingers to be a part of a championship team in the city of New York, you know, that's something that we'll, we'll regret for the rest of our lives, no doubt. But uh, what, what a year that was, and, and uh, it was a lot of fun to, to be a part of that and to, uh, you know, walk in to stadium. Well, you're right. We were basically rock stars at the time. I remember coming into, you know, uh, opponents, you know, going to cities and, and going into the hotel, we had to go into the back door. There were so many people in the lobby waiting to get a hold of, you know, a lot of our players, you know, get an autograph, whatever. But uh, that was, that was a pretty special season. There's no doubt. And um, you know, when, when we, I, I just actually contacted uh, Mike Stanley the other day and, and uh, it was, it was good memories and, and um, you know, it was, it was fun to be a part of that team, no doubt. Mike, we talked a little bit earlier about how the Yankees had to change the culture around their team. Gene Michael and Buck Showalter were so stressing that. They added you, they added Key, Boggs, O'Neill, Tartable, Spike Owen. Now, some of those guys were still there when they end up winning in 96. 95, you go back to Oakland. 96, you're in St. Louis sticking with Tony La Russa. I know that baseball, you can play so many what-if games. When they end up winning in 96, was there any part of you that played the what-if game and wondered if, if you could have persisted and stayed there a couple years longer if, if you would have been part of that? Oh, absolutely. No doubt about it. But I was also uh, proud to, to know that, you know, what Gene and, and Buck and, and George, the Steinbrenner family, did uh, to, to get that team rolling. Hey, you know, that's, that's part of the industry, you know. And, and you know, the, 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 you don't see – you didn't see too many players staying with one team, uh, you know, in, in that, in that era, you know, there's only a few guys that really kind of stayed, Don Manley stayed with one team, you know, uh, I was happy for, you know, I was actually, I think Don didn't make that team. Was he, he was he not there? He, uh, right. He finished the 95 division series that, that lost to the Mariners. That was his final major league. Yeah, game. That, that was, that was, a, that was, a, yeah, I, that was a thing that I do recall saying that Donnie, missed out more than I missed out, you know, and, and, uh, cause 94, you know, he was a part of the big, big part of that team. And here was an opportunity to bring Donnie to, to the playoffs. Um, but that's, that's, you know, um, I, I was just, I was just glad to see this happening, um, for the Yankees, for the Yankee organization. And, and to say that I had maybe a little part, uh, to help guide that organization in the, on the right path. That's all I could say, but, it would have been fun to be part of that, no doubt. Mike, you played for Tony La Russa almost your entire career. Jackie Moore, when you first started out, Buck Showalter with the Yankees. Now you're a bench coach for a very good manager in Joe Madden. What's the definition of a good bench coach? How are you helping Joe Madden during a game, after games? What do you feel that a, a good bench coach provides to his manager? Um, that's a great question. Uh, because I'm I'm a rookie again, to tell you the truth. After you're, starting, that, you're starting all over, right? In that I, role, you know, this is a, a new role for me, and and uh, I, you know, this spring I I learned a little bit about Excel. I had a, actually learned quite a bit about Excel, and uh, that was definitely a, a challenge for myself. But um, we we battled through it. Uh, I think for me, um, with Joe, Joe obviously is is. What a great guy to to work for and work side by side with. Um, he is he's so laid back, um, and and there's times that you you might think that he's not really paying attention because he's he'll be talking about uh, a rock group or a, a restaurant, and all of a sudden a pitch is called and he'll scream and bark at at the bad call that the umpire just made, and you're like, whoa, what's going on back behind me? So he doesn't miss a pitch, which is great because. 
of his his intensity is different from like a Tony La Russa. You know, it, it was they're, they're, these guys are geniuses, but they're 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 their mannerisms, their way of, of dealing with the players and dealing with the actual uh, on-field action, uh, the, man, the umpires, oppo the opponent, opponent managers, the uh, opposing managers, um, it, it's so, uh, so different. But I think to answer your question, my job, my role as a bench coach is obviously to be prepared um, for any question that he might ask. Um, I got to get better with my trivia because he does have a lot of trivia <laughs> and, and I, you know, I'm learning that I've learned that this spring. Um, but the, the preparation and, and for me is to be honest with Joe. Uh, I, that's why he's kept me around. I, I don't, I, I know Joe just, you know, by playing, you know, playing against him. I don't know. I never knew him personally. And he told me that he, he hired me because of, of, of my uh, experience uh, because of the respect that I had in the game. Um, and he basically said, I want you to be yourself. And that's why I hired you. I want you to be Mike Gallego. And he, and I went, wow, I think I can do that. I think I can be Mike Gallego. And so I, I, my whole thing is, is to be honest as I can with him. And obviously to know, to be smart as well. And to know when it's, it's the best answer is to just completely agree with what the manager's decision is. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, you know, in spring training, you know, when we talked baseball and, and dealt with sit situations, we were, um, you know, right on the same page. So uh, uh, I, I don't think it should be an issue with, with, with Joe. It's definitely has a lot to do with the manager that you're working with. No doubt about it. Mike, I'm going to use some baseball jargon to finish this out. This last question, I'm just putting it on a tee for you. You've played with MVPs, future Hall of Famers. You get to see Mike Trout on a daily basis. How high up that baseball mountaintop should we place Mike Trout? I'll tell you what, this kid is unbelievable. He's, um, I never got a chance to play with this guy, but I did see a lot of video. And he's today's Mickey Mantle. Mm. Um, this guy can do everything. He's a great guy, great kid, humble. Um, you'll see him be part of his routine for every game is he gets out there on time so he could sign autographs to 10 to 15 kids before, he, before the game. He has to get there on time to do his stretching, to do his running, but he also gives himself time to sign these autographs and he's always giving back. I mean, he takes care of, he takes care of the coaches. He takes care of the rookie players. He takes care of um, the fans. Uh, obviously he takes care of his family very well, but he's a guy that, you know, we sit there and watch every day and, and are just awed by what he produces. You know, you, there's no, there's, when you put the numbers together and watch the records, it's like, which record is he going to break? If, if he doesn't break it today, he's going to break it tomorrow or by the end of the season. There's no doubt about it. This guy um, can do it all, can run, can throw. He's actually, actually, he, he couldn't throw very well a couple years ago. And I, I heard the story that he went to Dino uh, and, and worked with him on his defense on getting better at making accurate and stronger throws this kid never stops working you know and and he's the first one at the ballpark literally and the last one one of the last ones leave and i'm not just saying that just to say that this guy's there at the ballpark and he 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 beat me every time last year no doubt about that but he's not just sitting there playing video games he's in the cage or he's in the weight room or he's in the training room. he's he's getting himself prepared for that game and uh it, he's he's definitely uh, you know, I, like you said, I've seen a lot of players, uh, but I've never seen anybody that that brings it like this guy every single day from the minute he walks in, drives into the parking lot to the minute he drives away. Next time you see Mike Trout, you can tell him this. You called him today's Mickey Mantle. And just like Mickey Mantle, Mike Gallego wore a single digit number for the New York Yankees. <laughs> I'll be glad to mention that to him. I'm sure, I'm sure he'll enjoy that one. Hey, Mike, it was great to spend a few minutes with you. You're always a stand-up guy by your locker to answer questions when I covered you in New York. And 
I appreciate that you did it again some 25 years later here. Well, I appreciate that you're still calling and, and uh, you know, it, it, it surprises me seriously when, when you guys ask for an interview or a kid still asks for, or, or for kids still ask for an autograph, you know, it's something that uh, uh, I, I can't believe, uh, you know, that people would still request me and uh, want something from me, but uh, it's something that I'm very proud of. And, and uh, you know, it, the beautiful part of this business is uh, uh, being able to give back. And, and uh, uh, that's what I continue to try to do. Thank you.